Now let's take a look at creating the animated menu. But before we get started, I just wanna advise you that you should be using the React Developer Tools. So that should be installed in Google Chrome. And with that installed, you can now inspect what components are currently on your page. For example, the header components or the Hello World components. And you'll also be able to see what props they have, what state they currently have set. And that's gonna be very useful for debugging during this tutorial, because we are gonna be making use of a component that has state. So what I'm gonna do is go over to my components directory and let's create a new file and we'll call this navigation.js. And this is gonna be fairly similar to our header component for now. So let's just import that code over here or copy paste that code over here. And we can change the function name to navigation and we'll just export navigation. And this is going to return a nav item. And for now, let's just return the nav so that we can get some styling right. And so I'm gonna go over to our header component here and I'm actually gonna import the navigation into this header component. So let's import navigation from dot slash navigation. And then we just wanna make use of that down here. So navigation. And so now we can see that we've got the nav appearing over here. Uh, let's take a look at styling this. So what I wanna do is maybe get rid of the font bold class and we can actually just create a span tag down here with the font bold class. And so now what I would like to do is take the nav and put it in the top corner. So what I'm gonna do is turn this into a flex box and then I'm going to justify the uh, items between. And then I'm also just going to add in items center, which should horizontally center them if this ever gets uh, bigger than the other one. Right, so now we've got our navigation. The next thing we wanna do is, instead of using a word, the nav, let's take a look at replacing this with an icon. So I'm gonna make use of Font Awesome, and they have a pretty good package for React. So you can see that they recommend that down here in their docs. So if you click on that link, that's gonna take you to Font Awesome's uh, GitHub page. And if you scroll down to the installation section, you can see that you can imp uh, install this package using either NPM or Yarn, and it's actually three separate packages that we have to install. So what I'm gonna do is install all three of those with this command over here. So now that we have these packages installed, the next thing we wanna do is actually make use of that. So we need to import the font awesome icon. And then we also need to import the specific icon that we wanna use. In this case, I wanna use the FA bars icon. So I'm just going to change this to FA bars and also just change the package to free solid icons. So now we have uh, the icon component and then we also have the JavaScript icon that we wanna use. Uh, so what we wanna do is add this in as a component, font awesome icon. And then this needs to take in a prop of icon and that icon needs to be the FA bars icon. So we're just gonna put that in there. And so now we've got uh, three little horizontal bars. The next thing I wanna do is maybe just increase the size of that a little bit. So now we've got an icon. The next thing I wanna do is whenever I click on this icon, I want to open and close the menu. So we need to be making use of state. So I can give this navigation some states by making use of a React hook. So let's create a React hook over here. And this is going to be the show menu, or this is gonna be a variable called show menu. And I'm going to use a method called set show menu whenever I want to change what's in that variable. And then we'll use the use state hook and I'm going to add in the word false over here. So what this is doing is it's creating a variable called show menu, which is going to be our state to check whether we should show the menu. Then we're also declaring that we're gonna use a uh, function or a method over here that is going to 
change the value of this variable. And then we are just using the use state hook from React. And we're setting this to have a current value of false. So our menu should always load in closed. And now if we take a look at our navigation component in React DevTools, you can see that we've got a hook over here with a state of false. So that's where that value got applied. Of course, if we set this to true, then that would change the value down here in state. But we're going to use the value of true to determine whether the menu should be open or not. So by default, it should be false. The menu should be closed. And then when we click on this icon, so let's go on click of this icon. What we want to do here is use an arrow function to change the value of show menu. So we're going to be using the set show menu uh, method here. And we're going to pass this a value of true for now. And so now our app loads in with state as false. But when we click the icon, uh, then state turns into true. Uh, so I'm not sure if maybe I should make that just a little bit bigger so we can see that. Uh, but now state has a value of true. So what we could also do just to make this value toggle is we can set this to the opposite of show menu. And so that means whenever I click on this button, it should alternate the value. So we've got true and then false and then true and then false whenever I click on it. Great. So that should toggle our menu open and closed. So what I want to do now is add in some HTML to display when that value is true. This is called conditional rendering in React, when we want to show a little bit of HTML, but only when a certain value is true. So what I want to do here is create a new variable. And we can set this equal to some JSX, like uh, this is the menu, right? And now, uh, if I were to output that variable at the bottom of my navigation, so where my navigation should be, we now have this is the menu output. But we only want this displaying when the menu is actually open, so when state is equal to true. So what I'd like to do is let's start off by initializing this variable, but as a null value, and that means that the menu won't be showing. But then I can create an if statement here, and I can check if show menu is equal to true. And if it is equal to true, true, then I'd like to give this menu variable a value. And this can be a div with uh, the menu, right? And so now, when I open the menu, we have the menu. And when I close the menu, we don't have the menu displaying anymore. So that is how you very simply conditionally render stuff in React. The next thing I want to do is probably just give this menu some styling. So I'm going to use some more Tailwind CSS classes here. And I'm going to give this a position of fixed and a BG of white for a white background. And then I'm also going to position it top zero, which should position it at the top of our browser. And then I'm also going to say left zero. So it'll be in the top left corner. And then we'll say W a w4-5 should be 80%. And so now if I come back over to uh, the browser over here, and I open my menu, now we've got our menu open and closing in the top corner. Of course, I also just want to give this another class of h full. And when our menu is open, it should take up the full width of uh, our page. And you can see it's not quite taking up the full width. And that's because the footer is positioned absolutely. Uh, so what we want to do is maybe just give this a z index of 50 to bring that up uh, a little bit. And so now our menu is actually displayed on top of our footer. We probably just want to give this a uh, shadow as well. So there's a class called shadow in Tailwind. And that's just given it a slight shadow along the uh, side over there. Great. So now we've got a menu item or a menu component that's basically popping in and out. 
Uh, the next thing I wanna do is probably just give this a little bit of a menu mask or a menu overlay. Uh, just to separate our menu from the background because right now it's white on white and that's not very visible. So what I'm gonna do is also create a menu mask and then we will uh, give that menu mask a value as well. And this menu mask will be another div. And this is just gonna be an empty div, but it will also have a class of BG black. And it'll also be fixed and it will also be in the top left corner. So top zero, left zero. And this is gonna be W full and H full and Z 50. And so now when we open up our menu, uh, oh, oops, we need to make sure that we also display that here. And it's going to have to be above the menu. Okay, so now when we open up our menu, we've got a black background and then we've also got our menu. Uh, of course, it would be much better if this background was slightly transparent. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to add in our own color to Tailwind CSS. So I'm gonna go over to Tailwind and I'm just gonna go to Theme Extend and I'm going to extend the background colors and I'm going to add in a background color of black T for black transparent 50 for 50% and then we'll give this an RGB value RGBA of 0 0 0 and then a comma 0.5 for a 50% transparency and so now in order to make use of this color I'm gonna go back over to my navigation and we'll add in that class, BG Black T50, but I'm gonna have to rebuild my CSS. So I'm gonna go back over to the command line here and I'm just going to run yarn build CSS. And that should build the CSS. And so now if I come back over to my app, uh, I have a slightly transparent black color here. And now what I'd like to do is when I click on this black, it should close my menu. So what I wanna do is add in an on-click listener. And we're going to also set this to an arrow function. And this arrow function is also going to set show menu, but it's always going to provide the value of false. So that means it should always make sure that the menu is closed whenever you click on it. So if we open the menu now and then click on the black background, you can see that that closes the menu. Of course, if I open the menu and click within the white part of our menu, that isn't closing the menu. So now we have a menu that's opening and closing. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at doing the animations. So that's all I have for you in this video, but please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, share this video with your friends, tell them it's the best React course that you've ever seen, and I'll see you guys in the next one.